Today, we're all accustomed to seeing those buzzing YouTube video headlines. The future is now. Robot Oz. And as promised, we kicked on the YouTube video and out strolls a little robot, kicks a ball, serves a cup of tea. Wow, the movements are impressive, but there's still that underlying problem of clunkiness. The movements are completely power driven, not fluid or natural like a human beings. After all, it's not exactly a compliment to say to your friend, hey bro, you dance like a robot. So how do we tackle this problem of clunkiness? This is where my research comes in. I studied the biomechanics and locomotion of spiders. We understand that efficient movement is key to an animal's survival in the wild. Efficient movement allows an animal to move with, um, adaptively and with endurance, uh, with endurance through its environment. Efficient movement takes advantage of the pendulum-like qualities of its skeletal muscle design and couples it with the elasticity of its tendons and muscles. Consider for a moment that the human leg is like a pendulum. As it moves from high to low, making contact with the ground and carrying on, it recaptures most of the energy. Now compare this to a generic robot's gait, which is mostly power driven in its joints and from an onboard computer. And most of that energy is dissipated into the environment, inefficient. These passive qualities I've outlined can be found in most legged creatures from larger animals, such as ourselves, humans, down to the eight little critters like spiders. Currently, I'm building and modeling an eight legged runner that has these same passive bouncy qualities, as can be seen here in my CAD design. Using only stretchy plastic joints and springs, we 3D print these little eight-legged runners that use very little battery power. This is in stark contrast to current robots, which have massive batteries to feed power-hungry computers. But you may be wondering, why, why build a model that, is, has eight, that has eight legs when you could be building it based off of something that's more generic, more recognizable like a human being? For a couple of reasons. One, spiders are, in, are innately very stable. So for trying to mimic or build in their biomechanics, we know they won't topple over, say like a bipedal robot. Second, spiders are nimble and fast, ideal characteristics for a robot. This robot that I'm designing will be cost effective, efficient, and can be mass produced very quickly, say to be used for disaster relief after an earthquake, for example. Concluding, I argue that we can build better bio-inspired robots that more, move more naturally and more bouncy, to be quite honest. These robots will use far less processing power, less computing power, lending to an overall lighter, more naturally moving robot. Let us take a step back to fully understand animal locomotion and biomechanics so that we can take a step forward in robotic design. Thank you. Thank you. That was a great start. You've set the bar right up here, so well done on that. Uh, once I got over my repulsion of actually seeing that spider and focused on the robotic side, it was great. Um, excellent body language, very engaging start, nice link to the impacts of the research, so well done. Thank you. Fantastic, especially in the really difficult position of first up. I agree with Rachel, I loved your body language and particularly the hand gestures. I like that you linked what you're talking about to the little spider movements as we went along. Um, you've made really good statements of, of what we in marketing call unique selling propositions for what you were doing. They were memorable, efficiency, usage, and I love that you ended with a tagline, something that's going to stick in our memories. Do you want to invest? <laughs> <laughs> ah, you were listening to Claire. Okay, I work in the arts, so I definitely won't be investing in anything. So, um, okay, um, I thought that you, you started really beautifully by um, giving us an example from everyday life that we could all immediately relate to with something, obviously, like robotics, which is not part of our everyday lives particularly. Um, and I also thought that one of the great um, things that you see in a nice story well told is that when the audience has a question that it's answered almost immediately, which is what you, um, what you did very nicely there. Like um, when you told us of uses of this, I was going, what could you use it for? And then there you go, you answered it. So thank you very much. Thanks.